So guys, I just watched Blade Runner for the first time. What have I been doing for the past 35 years? What's going on guys? Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys another collaboration review. That's right, with the highly anticipated Blade Runner 2049 coming out this weekend, what better time for me to review Blade Runner, the classic film from 1982, with someone who's a, the hugest Blade Runner fan I know. It's his favorite movie of all time. That's right, Jay Vaders has joined me for this review. Jay, say what's up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is Jay Vaders in the house. Yes, uh, hey, I'm Jay Vaders. I'm on Jay Vaders on YouTube, and yes, I'm excited to talk about Blade Runner 1982. I've never reviewed it on my channel, but I'm excited to review it here. This is my favorite film of all time, and I'm excited to do this review with Ryan. Let's do this! Yes, let's do it indeed. That's right. Blade Runner was directed by Ridley Scott, one of the greatest directors ever. came out in 1982, and it starred Harrison Ford as Rick Deckard, and it also had some other cast members like Rucker Hauer and Mary Sean Young. And just as a heads up, guys, this review will be filled with spoilers. So if you have not seen Blade Runner, please watch it. It's a great film. So that way you're prepared for spoilers. Let's talk about what the plot to Blade Runner is all about. You have Detective Rick Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, who's going after what's called replicants. Replicants are kind of like Terminators. They can do anything. They can destruct anything. Rick Deckard is trying to go after six replicants. He's coming out of retirement, and he's saying this is his last mission. He has his eye on one replicant, who's played by Rucker Hauer, and he set out to destroy all of them to protect Earth. Going into Blade Runner, I knew it was a great film, and some people think it's kind of overrated, which I disagree. I think this is a really great, interesting sci-fi movie that definitely defined visual effects in the 1980s. So Jay, what is your overall experience, and when was the first time you saw Blade Runner? Well, my experience with Blade Runner, it started when I was young. Uh, my grandparents had the VHS tape of uh, Blade Runner. It was the director's cut that came out in 1982, not the theatrical cut. I watched that later. It's awful. There's three versions of Blade Runner. The theatrical cut, uh, the director's cut, and then the final cut. I saw the director's cut first, and I saw it on VHS, and I was really young. I was like in 1999, I was pretty young, and I didn't understand it, and I didn't like it. But years later, when the final cut first came out in 2007, I watched the final cut and it instantly became my favorite movie. I got sucked into the world, to these characters. It was thought-provoking, it was profound, it was euphoric. I loved the score, the visuals, the characters. Everything about Blade Runner is, some, is everything that I love about film. And it became my instant favorite film of all time. Yeah, I definitely really liked it too. It definitely got me thinking by watching it one time. And it's going to process when you watch it the first time. So let's just quickly talk about our positives because there's definitely a lot of them. And you mentioned the performances. Harrison Ford as Rick Deckard was absolutely amazing in this film. I mean, this was in the middle of his prime. I mean, Harrison Ford with Star Wars as Han Solo, Indiana Jones, Blade Runner, and also Witness, which is an extremely underrated film. Yeah, Harrison Ford was just in hit after hit. Amazing is Rick Deckard, and I love also, my favorite performance is Rudger Hauer as Roy Batty. He is such a great actor. I always say he should have been nominated for supporting actor Rudger Hauer because I thought he was so great. Uh, the villain is just so compelling and interesting, and I love a villain that is sympathetic because replicants are used as slaves in the film. So all this uh, replicant wants is to live because they have a three or four year lifespan and that's what makes this villain so compassionate because he's doing these bad things because he wants life and it all comes from the performances and mostly uh, Rudger Hauer as Roy Batty he is so good in this movie and I won't talk about the ending yet but the ending scene with him is like one of my favorite scenes in all of film it's just such a great and very powerful scene and his performance is just so good in the movie Mary Shawn Young as Rachel who is a replicant, and I do really like, you know, it's kind of a love story with her and Rick Deckard, and you see some parts in the film. The part where Rick Deckard forces her to kiss her, 
that got me thinking a little bit. And she was a great character also. So I, would you definitely say this is definitely one of the best underrated love stories? Yeah, um, it, it starts off uh, bizarre, too, because... Uh, it kind of, she doesn't kind of like him at first, and she thinks she herself is human, and he's the one that exposes her as a replicant and everything, because she has false memories in her brain. She has memories of Tyrell, Tyrell's niece, and basically Rick Decker does the, you know, the replicant test with her, and she, like, almost passes it, because it takes a, a hundred questions for her, for him to find out that she is a replicant. And she doesn't like Rick Decker at first, because... Yeah, he basically exposes her and everything, and she even says to him, have you ever taken that test yourself? Like, because he's, like, showing no compassion or humanity. He's the only one that understands her, and it becomes this bizarre romance that really works, actually, and it gets a little dark, but it's really well done and really well directed and really well acted by Sean Young and Harrison Ford, and I did like the love story. And I'm curious to see, because by the ending of the film, you you know what's going to happen, but I, I'm curious what they're going to do with it in Blade Runner 2049. So, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see that as well. So now let's talk about the visuals, the world, and the action. Oh my god, this is some of the... This is some of the best visual effects I've seen in film. This world right here, the Blade Runner, the Blade Runner world is absolutely amazing. The flying cars, it's just groundbreaking. It's heavily inspirational to you. A lot of films have taken the visual style of Blade Runner and put it in their own movies. Movies like Gattaca, Ghost in the Shell, even The Matrix took... Ghost in the Shell this year, yeah. yeah. They took visual styles of Blade Runner, the worlds and the technology of Blade Runner, and it's fantastic. Visually stunning, the cinematography. Jordan Krenworth uh, did the cinematography for this movie. He did an amazing job. It's beautifully shot. This whole world looks just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. One of my favorite worlds in film. It's just so beautiful and I love it. It's very uh, new noir, very film noir style filmmaking and I absolutely love it. It's so good. Now you mentioned the score earlier. The score is amazing as well and just watching the trailers to Blade Runner 2049 it's the same exact score. Like you know the do do. It's very very electronic and it, that definitely ringed a lot the entire film. I have the whole score on my phone of the list of my playlists. It's uh, the score is conducted by uh, Vangelis and the scores, the music, the songs, it, it adds to the darkness of Blade Runner but also adds to the sci-fi element of Blade Runner, especially the end credits. That score is like my favorite score in all of the film. It's just really good and I absolutely love it. I have to give commends to Ridley Scott and his direction in this film. It's absolutely amazing and Ridley Scott absolutely defined the sci-fi genre starting with Alien and then Blade Runner and then The Martian. I mean this man is just I think the greatest sci-fi director of all time. He crafts a world extremely well. He makes it look realistic and he has world-defining characters and here he just absolutely brings it and Ridley Scott absolutely deserves all the credit. I'm very curious to see how Denis Villeneuve's gonna do with 2049 I think he's gonna crush it but Ridley Scott he did create this world and so he definitely deserves all the props. Yeah he did an amazing job. Fun fact Martin Scorsese was originally approached to do Blade Runner. It's, <laughs> that would have been a completely different movie I think. <laughs> I don't know make, make Roy Batty a mobster I don't know but uh, I thought Ridley Scott did an amazing job. This is Ridley Scott, Alien and Blade Runner are Ridley Scott's favorite films of all time, in his own opinion. That, those are his favorites, that he put the most passion in both of those films, and I think he did an amazing job directing this film. The way it's structured and executed is beautiful, and I think this is a sci-fi masterpiece. I think it's artistic, it's a great neo-noir, the world, the characters, the direction, the storytelling. It's amazing, and it's all thanks to Ridley Scott. He is a true visionary, and it really shows in Blade Runner. As far as negatives, on my first watch, I honestly thought some of the rep some of the replicant aspects could have been a little bit more fleshed out, like the one girl who looked like Harley Quinn. <laughs> uh, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, she really didn't have that much development to me. But in the end, it's, it's still well explained towards the end. Like, she is relevant. But it's really Roy Beatty, as you said, really steals the show. That was just one 
That was just my only gripe with the film, honestly. Yeah, they dive more into the characters in the book. The book, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, written by Phil K. Dick in 1963. They dive more into the characters and the psyche of the characters because it is a book. It's more telling. That's why I like Blade Runner actually the movie more than the book because it's more show than tell. It's visual storytelling. And the book is more talking and talking and talking. So they explain more about the characters in the book. But I like the movie more because I'm a visual kind of guy. <laughs> and now you did want to talk about the ending, Jay. Just give us your honest overall reaction of how that ending went in your eyes. Oh my god, I've talked about this ending to death. About oh, I, just, I talk about this with anyone I show Blade Runner to. The ending of the movie, uh, Roy Batty finds the last two replicants, Pris and Roy, ba or Roy, Roy Batty. He kills Pris, and then he, uh, basically there's like this one-on-one -on -one square off in Jeff Sebastian's house with Roy Batty. And it's just such an intense scene because Roy Batty is slowly dying throughout the scene, so he like stabs his hand to get his hand to work again. He starts like removing his he starts removing his clothes because he needs to get movement and feeling back in his body. And Rick is just like trying to escape from him. He like breaks Rick Deckard's fingers. It's just a really intense scene. Rick Deckard is about to fall off the building. And then Roy Batty saves him, which is interesting because you're like, this is supposed to be our villain. He should be killing the good guy. But he saves Rick Deckard. He pulls Rick Deckard up. And then it's just this very beautiful scene, very atmospheric scene. The score adds to it. And of course, uh, Roy Batty's performance. And the last words he says is, all those moments in time will be lost like tears in the rain. I love that line. It's a beautiful line. And he just dies right there, and Rick Deckard is almost confused of why he saved him. And it adds to, like, the depth of Roy Batty. And then at the very ending, he goes to Sean Young, uh, Rachel, and uh, Edward James almost left this little unicorn for him. And you see throughout the whole film, Rick Deckard has dreams of unicorns. So how would this guy know he dreams of unicorns? Maybe Rick Deckard himself is a replicant. So, it just mind-blowing shit right there. <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely ties in extremely well, like the Easter eggs and all that. Yeah, I thought the ending was pretty weird at first, but everything you just said makes complete sense. And how he just dies at the end is just like, what? But it's creative. And yeah, I actually really like the ending now. Everything else you just basically said described my overall thoughts. Like this movie at first was confusing at some scenes. I'll have to rewatch it and then gain some more knowledge on it. But overall, this was a great sci-fi film. Really, Scott nailed it. The performances are excellent. The visuals, everything about Blade Runner is a must-see and should be much more appreciated. And it just makes me even more excited for Blade Runner 2049. I love it. It's my favorite film of all time. Again, I've seen it almost 35 times. So I've seen it a lot of times. I've studied the movie. I've done research papers about the movie. When I was in college, I did all these stuff about research about it and everything. Just conflict theory and functionalist theory about Blade Runner. Everything about Blade Runner I love. I love the characters, the visuals, the world, the story. Everything about Blade Runner is amazing. It's based off a great book. I even think it's better than the book, and it's my favorite film of all time. It's not like the funnest movie of all time. It's no Raiders of the Lost Ark, or Star Wars, or Back to the Future, or Princess Bride. It's not like a movie you can pop on every day, but it's a good movie to watch, like, at least once a month, and, you know, watch a good, profound, intellectual, thought-provoking sci-fi film. It's my favorite film of all time. Alright, and so our overall grades, um, I'm gonna give Blade Runner a 5 out of 5 stars just on the filmmaking aspect and the characters and just really making you think. And so, yeah, I love Blade Runner. And I'm, I'm assuming you're the same thing. Yeah, uh, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, it's amazing, it's brilliant, it's my favorite film of all time, it's, it's amazing, it's brilliant. Alright guys, that was our spoiler filled review for Blade Runner. Stay tuned because we're going to see Blade Runner 2049, look out for our reviews on our channels. And Jay, I just want to say thank you for joining me on my channel, talking about Blade Runner. I'm sure you've talked about this movie non-stop, but thank you for joining me on this movie review of Blade Runner. And so, before we close out the video, Jay, tell my subscri tell my subscribers where we can find you on your social media. I'm Jay Vader's on Jay Vader's on YouTube. Again, I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, top tens, rankings. I just reached 1,000 subscribers. Yay! And you can check me out on YouTube and Facebook. And yeah. 
check me out. I'm a good re movie reviewer, in my opinion. But yeah, check me out. Thanks for having me, Ryan. No problem. Yes, Jay competed on Rotten or Fresh. Go check him out on my episode three. So, see how we did. Uh, thank you guys, as always, for watching this review. And if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below, as well as a link to my Patreon page. And click that notification bell on your way out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Dark side!